Okay, so responsive sizing. How can we define multiple images so we can display different images to based on the size of the browser? So if you notice at the very top of the picture stack, we have a little plus button. And if we click on that, you notice that there's two different options. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna look at warehouse um, really quick, but we're gonna use drag and drop for the rest of this video. So let's look at what warehouse gives us. If you click on warehouse, you'll notice that you can define um, just like the normal picture stack, um, an image and a retina image. And again, the, if you don't define a retina image, it, it won't be used, um, but it definitely recommended you supply both. Then you can supply the type of image. So if, if this is a GIF or an SVG or a WebP or even an MP4, right? This is really cool. So if you have an actually an MP4 file um, that has no audio, uh, you can actually insert it onto the page using the picture stack um, as an alternative. So that's really cool. Uh, and then below we have a media query. And this allows us to um, define where this image is going to be used. So is it gonna be used on medium screen devices? large screen devices, uh, you know, a certain aspect ratio, uh, will it be used in portrait mode? So if you want to display a different image, um, when a device is in portrait mode, you can do that. You can target dark mode, and then you can also per, uh, target prefers reduced motion. And this is useful for if you actually are supplying an MP4, um, if you, def you can also define a JPEG fallback if a person prefers reduced motion, or if you you can supply a GIF or offer a static version if in someone's browser they prefer reduced motion, right? So this is the ability to kind of be nice to your user so that if they actually prefer, um, you know, to save on bandwidth, um, this option will serve up a static image rather than something like a GIF or an MP4. And last but not least, if you're a super uber geek, you can do a custom media query and do something slick there. Okay, so the rest of this um, video, we're gonna be looking at um, drag and drop just because it's a little bit simpler, okay? Than me worrying about copying and pasting URLs from my server. Okay, so here we are. Um, I can then, inside here, uh, I'm gonna drag and drop a couple images. So here I've set up a picture stack so that we have different images on small, medium, and large devices. So when we are using on the actual default picture stack level, we're gonna actually define the small images. These are the, gonna be the images that we define on mobile devices, okay? And then if we click on our various rules that I added, so here I've added um, a large rule. So if we click on this, we'll notice that I have added two images that are gonna be used for large devices, a non-retina and retina version. And then I set the media query to be large. And then I added another um, size here for medium. And then I supplied, my, I supplied the medium image and medium retina images. Now you might be thinking, that's a lot of images. That is six different images that we need to now create for different sizes, right? Yes, it is. Um, so what are some ideas that we could do? You know, that's a lot of work. What can we do to speed that process up a little bit? So I, I don't want to make this entire video a, a sales or an image optimization video, um, but I just want to give you a small tip. So here, I, here was the main image that I had for this image, right? Very large image. I just got it off Adobe stock, right? Um, basically, I used an app called Retrobatch. Now there's a lot of really great apps out there, um, but Retrobatch is a really cool one. And it basically allows me to create this workflow where essentially I could say run and it asks me what images I want. I click on that image and I say load images. And what it does is it automatically creates all of these images for me in four, in about five seconds, right? Um, really, really cool. Now, one thing it doesn't isn't, fantastic on is optimization. Um, so if you look here, I actually ran it through three of my favorite um, image optimization programs. Um, image Optum, uh, Image Shrinker, and JPEG Mini. Now, again, I'm, I'm not going to make this entire video all about image optimization. For this particular image, Image Shrinker wins big time, right? Um, if you notice here, like, our largest image is gonna be the large retina um, image. This particular one is 3000 pixels wide. 
uh, and image shrinker gets down to 620 kilobytes. Wow. Blow your mind. Um, image optim gets down to 1.6 and JPEG mini gets it down to, you know, 1.2, right? But, um, image shrinker for this particular image, um, is the winner. Um, you know, you kind of learn over time, which of these three, uh, apps will do better on particular images. Um, image shrinker for this particular image wins hands down, and it will win for a lot of JPEG images. I will make sure if you want to check out retro batch it's from flying meat. Um, I will make this particular workflow available. Um, and you know, you just basically go through here in the scale, set the sizes that you want for each. Um, you know, here I set it for kind of like a good, you know, hero header sort of image. This is 3000 pixels, 2000, 1500, 1200, 1000 and 600. Right. So, um, adjust these sizes for the size image you need. Um, please do that. Don't, you don't want to have a 3000 scaled image for something that's only going to be a small portion of your web page, right? So you're going to have to modify these values a little bit, but, um, great app. Okay. So back to the picture stack, um, you'll notice that if you want to just keep adding, you can add as many conditions as you want, um, in here and then just drag and drop the images in. So if you wanted to supply a special one for dark mode and stuff like that, you can just add on as many conditions as you want. Now, the key of this, the order is very important for these rules. Essentially what it does is it, it does the first one that matches its rule wins. So if we are uh, on a desktop device, it'll uh, come through the top and go, Hey, I'm a desktop. I'm large. Boom. This first rule matches me. Cool. I'm going to go and find the image or retina image that I need. Okay. Let's say we're on an iPad. It's going to go through and say, it's going to hit this first condition, which is large and say, Nope, I'm not large. I'm going to keep going minimum, uh, device width 640 pixels. Hey, that's me. Okay. That means I'm going to then use these images and essentially, um, the default image that you add to the main picture stack is your default catch all image. Okay. Which is, should be your small device. So if an iPhone comes in, it's going to say, okay, cool. I'm not, I'm not 1200, you know, I'm not a thousand pixels. I'm not 640 pixels. Boom. I'm going to go ahead and use the default image that's displayed, that's supplied in the, in the picture stack. So hopefully these, these rules are very important, the order. Um, so the topmost rule that it finds wins. Mm -hmm.